Hello, and welcome to Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explore, we're going to see how to draw lines with Zim, and indeed other shapes, and maybe make some dynamic lines. So let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com, and we will press on the code section here and hit copy to get our template. And then we'll paste it into an editor such as Adam. And here we go. And we can call this one lines.html. And we're bringing in Zim. And down here where it says put your code here, we can get rid of the circle stuff. And let's have a look. Open in Browser Plus, or indeed open in a browser would be fine too. And there's uh, our basic template without our circle anymore. This is where we will draw some lines together. That's great. And this is at a request here from Pedro. Hello there, Pedro. He's new to Zim. He's saying, hey, would you mind explaining me how to draw a line? Thanks in advance. So that's nice. You're welcome to come in to Zim and check out all of what's going on here. Oh, people drawing mustaches and stuff. And there's all sorts of places where you can ask questions and and hang out with us. That would be super. Zimjs.com slash slack. Right, so there's a couple of ways to draw a line in Zim. One is to use the new line class, and there's examples of that in the docs. Do you know where the docs are? Let's go take a peek. Docs right here. And uh, so you go, you go to the Zim site. Oh, well, this is a different window. It's not the same one as we were working in. Uh, you would go to the um, the Zim site, which is here. I have a shortcut right to the docs, which I'm used to pressing. That's, that's a good idea to do. And instead of hitting the code, you hit the docs and you arrive at the docs. You can, if you type in line, you'll get to uh, a doc entry about a line. There's also a squiggle, which can do a straight line with with points like that, and those are editable by the end user, or optionally editable. And you can also use a shape. I'm actually going to show you how to do things with the shape, and not with the line, because the line's pretty darn simple. Make a new line. There's the length of the line. You can adjust it how you want, and there's an example here somewhere. Uh, darn, it's not listed. Well, maybe it's down here. Easel stuff, view and vids. No, I'm sorry about that. We didn't actually put the Zimcat example of a line in here anywhere that I can see. Not there. So we'll try and remember to add that. But I do know where to find that. That's back on the Zim site here. As the cat opens up, the line is new to Zim. Uh, there's connectors as well, so if you need lines that you can drag to other things, like uh, there's a line being dragged, or here we're connecting those things, or here we're making uh, little hierarchies and stuff. So that that's also a way to uh, create lines, but these are interactive lines. You may just want to create normal lines. <laughs> there are all sorts of ways to make lines, it seems. Huh? Uh, and then I was moving to new in Zimcat as well is a line, which is, that's the poly. Here's the line right here. So here's an example of how to make lines. So this line is being animated with an interval, probably. And it's got different ends on it, as you can see. Here's the line that's just being wiggled or animated back and forth, it looks like. And that line also has a, uh, the, on the border, there's a stroke, a, a custom stroke that is being done. Here's a line. This is a line and underline there. So indeed, we have uh, lines. And you can view the source here and see how to do it. We should have put a link to the, the cat example here, but you know where to find it now. So that's another place to find lines. But what I would like to show you is just how to draw a line in a shape. That's how these lines were actually made inside of shapes. 
And so let's do that. And we would look up shape here if we wanted to see that. Not make shape, but there it is, shape. So shape A, B, C, D, and graphics, and optimize. Okay, so usually we don't pass in parameters to shapes. Um, so we just make a new shape like this. Traditionally, we would use the graphics property there and begin a fill or draw a rectangle, or you could just draw a stroke. Uh, well, a line doesn't have a fill, so instead of, well, this is begin fill, draw a rectangle, but there are little shortcuts. F for fill and DR for draw rectangle. Um, in Zim, we've shortened it so you can draw these things. That's a stroke color and a stroke style. Yay, this is a line. We're going to move to this and we're going to line to that right there. And then we're adding it. So all of that will draw us our line. We'll try that together. But we use these short little minified, uh, what do they call them? Tiny URLs, tiny API. There we go, not a tiny URL. <laughs> I know what that is. The tiny API. This stands for a stroke, stroke style. That's its thickness and various other stroke things as the next parameter there. We can move to a location, X and Y location, and draw a line. All of this can now be chained right onto the Zim shape. So Zim is based in CreateJS. CreateJS is based on the canvas. And the canvas has ways to draw lines as well that is very similar to all this stuff. It's sort of like the raw thing that we do on the canvas and actually not much else. Um, lines and shapes. And that's sort of the idea behind the canvas is just to be able to do that. CreateJS came along and, and made containers for that kind of stuff. It handled events on these things so we could do things like drag them or click on them and know what we're clicking on. And then Zim came along and added a whole bunch more. <laughs> but we still have the basic shape, which is much like the CreateJS shape. So this basically extends the CreateJS shape. The CreateJS shape extends all of the canvas stuff so that we can just do things a little bit easier. However, uh, the shape is not necessarily all that easy. It's it's low level. So as, as you're drawing here, this is like the basic building blocks of everything that's in Zim. Uh, things like buttons are made from shapes, uh, etc. And, and just about everything that's in Zim has been made from a shape somehow. <laughs> Neat, huh? And there's now many, 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 many things in Zim, as you can see. Okay, so let's uh, carry on, but it is the shape if you want to draw lines sort of in a very raw sense, uh, you would use a shape. We'll keep that open just in case we need it. And then I'll come on over into here and we'll start doing that code together in our Zim Explorer. Ooh. All right, one thing to watch out for if you come from CreateJS, uh, you have to use a graphics property. In Zim, you don't have to. So if we say new shape, if you're used to create JS, we would have to store this in a variable of some sort. Const shape is equal to, or if we're going to make a line, we could call it line, I suppose, is equal to a new shape, like so. If you were in create JS, you would have to say line dot graphics dot and then here's where we put the commands to make our lines. Well, we got tired of doing that. This was just a bit annoying. So what we did is there's stroke is one, for instance, stroll, <laughs> stroke. And there's also dot stroke style like that. And we would put things in here. This is the color of the stroke, red, for instance. And this is the thickness of the stroke, five. And then there's other information about the stroke there. And these things would then work on the graphics property. We'd have to make sure that we add our shape to the stage. So uh, dot add two is the basic way to add something to the stage. You don't have to say stage there. It does it by default. In CreateJS, you don't have add to, you would have to then afterwards, you would say stage.add child. I haven't done an add child in years now. Uh, the line. And see, that doesn't chain. So we can't chain this. We have to, oh, 
uh, rate. Anyway, it's it's backwards. See, for us to chain, like here, dot add to, we're putting this method on the line, and by default it adds it to the state. So we just sort of flipped it around the other way. So like I said, now in Zim, I haven't used an uh, stage dot add to, no, stage sorry, stage dot add child in many years because we've got all sorts of ways. We've got add to, we've got loc, we've got pose, we've got center, center reg. Those are the ways that we tend now to add things to the stage. All those things position it as it adds it to. Okay, or add it to any other container as well. It doesn't have to be the stage. But if you don't put anything in here, it is the stage. And just a warning, why not? Hey, we're exploring. If you have two frames, then if you just use add to, it's going to add it to the default frame. So just watch that. Even if you're in the code for the second frame and you say add to, it's going to add it to the first frame that was made, unless you change the default frame. So that means uh, in a second frame code, you might actually have to specify the stage of the second frame. Anyway, a little bit of an aside, don't worry about that. Usually you don't have more than one frame. That's just on occasion we want to do that. All right, so this is, this is, uh, very, this is the similar, similar to CreateJS aside from the add to. You've got to use the graphics property and you can use these big words. Well, we don't use the big words very much, so our, if we use small words, it would be like this, graphics.s red dot ss for stroke style five. You can do this in CreateJS too. So this is raw CreateJS that will all work, except for the add to, which is not CreateJS. In Zim, we got tired of putting it on the graphics property. So we got rid of the graphics property and we added these little tiny methods right to the shape itself, which means we can chain these things right onto the shape if we want like this. Oop. So we're gonna make a new shape, add it to the stage, and we're going to start working on the shape right like that. And sometimes we drop this down like so. So each of the steps we go. What we didn't do though, is because, because we use these small ones all the time and never use the big ones, we didn't bother adding the big ones directly to the shape. So you could not chain on to the shape, the big word stroke. So that's why I did all this little exercise here just to point that out. So this all works in CreateJS, but in for a Zim shape, we decided not to make these big words. As that's a whole bunch of, it's like another 20 or 30 commands thrown onto a shape, which we didn't really need. So if you do want to use these big words, you're welcome to go out to the graphics property and use the big words. All that still works. So all this stuff still works in Zim. It's just, uh, if we're, using a Zim shape, we can't use the big words here. So we don't need any of that stuff. There we go. This now will get us started, but all it's done is set a stroke of red and a stroke style of five. We now want to dot move to a certain location. To draw a line, you have to start at somewhere. And we'll start at zero, zero. And then you dot line two um, 100, 100, and let's have a look. So the line two method, if you were in CreateJS, you could use the full line two on the graphics property, but we did not move the full line two over. We only have the little LT for line two, and I think you'll get used to these quite, quite quickly. So we save that up and we refresh here, and now you've got a stroke to there. What happens if we don't have the move to zero, zero? One would think, hey, it starts at zero, zero. And I refresh here, doesn't show up. So that probably could have been adjusted in some manner. I'm not actually sure. It'd have to be probably in the CreateJS side to say, hey, CreateJS, they don't go anywhere. Please just start at zero. But they seem to uh, require you to be somewhere before you can draw a line. So just watch out for that. If you don't see a line, that may 
be because you haven't moved to. In the past, this used to break if we have stuck that before the stroke. Let's have a look. We refresh. It's broken still. I wasn't sure if that had been adjusted ever. So if you move to somewhere before you set the stroke, that's also considered broken because <laughs> it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't know where to start the stroke because you hadn't set the stroke yet. So set the stroke and the stroke style first, then move to and line to. There we go. So hopefully that's not, you know, too specific for you, but there is a line that has been drawn. Great. And of course, you don't have to start at zero, zero. Uh, we could start at stage width divided by two and stage height divided by two. That's at the center of the stage. And now we're going from the center of the stage to position 100, 100. Of course, this is zero, zero up here, and that's positive in the Y. And this is positive in the X. You can tell that by adding a grid, new grid. Grid's a little special thing. You just, uh, it'll figure out where you want to put that grid. You don't even have to add it. And we refresh here. Grid shows you percentage to start because it's usually done with responsive design. But if we hit the P key, now it's pixels. And we can see we're from the center here. This is the center of our stage to 100, 100 on the, sorry, it's going to be small, to 100, 100. These boxes are basically, the big boxes are 100, 100, and then boxes of 10 in there. Okay, so that's uh, the scoop. And as we go to the right here, X is getting bigger. And as we go down, Y is getting bigger. I don't think we really need the grid. All right, well, hey, there's a line. See what the heck is going on with my scroll? And there's a line. Super. <laughs> Hello. I think my Adam is messed up with my scroll wheel or something like that. I'm here. Weird. See what I mean? Like I'm here, I'm rolling over, I'm not doing anything with the scroll wheel. And as soon as I get into the scroll wheel area here, I'm just going to close this stuff down for a sec. Zim Explore. Let's try this again. File, reopen, last item. Okay, that seems good. And then open in Browser Plus. All right, we're good. Oh. <laughs> so what else do we want to see? What if we wanted to make the line say, follow the mouse? So uh, we'll start at 100, 100, and we'll make the other end, as I move here, follow the mouse. So that's a dynamically drawn line. OK, we can do that. So we really only need to change the line on a stage mouse move, it's called. <laughs> we got to fix that one day. We, we still haven't. There's, if you, if you want to follow where the mouse is on the stage, um, well, you could get the frame, frame dot um, mouse x and frame dot mouse y. That will give it give you the value at any time. So we could put that in a ticker. So here's one way. The ticker runs all the time. Ticker dot add, and we add a function. We'll add an arrow function to the ticker. I think we're just starting to move into ES6. Like I've been coding in ES6 now for a couple of years, I suppose, three years or so, and we've kept all of our examples on video as ES5. Um, all of our CodePen examples are ES6. So anyway, I hope you don't mind. Uh, ho hopefully you know that that's like an anonymous function, which looks like that. So you'll see many examples like that, certainly in the JavaScript world. That's how we did in ES5. It still works, still fine, no problem at all. But if you're interested in using an arrow function, in Adam I type in AF and it gives me an arrow function. This is basically the same thing, it has some conveniences, it's a little bit shorter. So this is the arrow function that we're adding to the ticker. That means basically whatever we put in here will run 60 frames per second on desktop, 30 frames per second on mobile by default. You can also set the frame rate if you so desire. 
So in here, we're going to keep on redrawing this line. So we can make the line a new shape, that's great, but we're going to clear the line. And when we clear the line, it also clears the stroke and the stroke style. So basically, all this stuff needs to go in here on the line, like so. So now here we are inside this ticker function, drawing the line. One of the, the first things we're going to have to do is, uh, we can do it right here, dot clear the line. So that's a little c. In the full word, it would be clear. But uh, if we're dotting right onto the line shape, remember, we have to use a small one, which is clear. So basically, what's going to happen here is the shape is going to be added initially, because we only need to do that once. So we'll just end that up here. Create the shape. We'll add it. And then in the ticker, we will continuously draw a line. We're going to clear it and then redraw it. And right now, nothing is really happening. It is actually being redrawn 60 times per, uh, a second. We can't tell. Uh, but instead of moving to the stage width and the stage height, we want to move to the frame dot mouse x and the frame dot mouse y. Now this isn't the final version of this because as mentioned, this is running all the time. What if we're just holding, we're not moving our mouse. It's a waste of processing power, a waste of battery. They're not even moving the mouse. So this is the wrong place to put it, but I'm just gonna show you we could put it in a ticker, but then it looks like this. We'll need a, st oh, ticker does the stage.update for us, unless optimize is true. So there we go. Now we have a line being redrawn to where the mouse is, the frame. The mouse. Um, that's not too bad. We're actually, if you, the, the, the value of that is being calculated by ZimFrame automatically and uh, being given to us. We can collect that more specifically when we do, let's, let's do a frame dot mouse move or a frame sorry, a stage dot stage mouse move. So that will give us the mouse position um, when we do a stage mouse move, okay? So that looks like this. Instead of in a ticker, which runs all the time, we can go stage dot on stage mouse move. And this is the one that I was thinking that we should probably rename, rename that as a little bit ridiculous. The, the reason why it's not just on mouse move is mouse move would operate if there's something on the stage. So if you move over something on the stage, then you get stage dot on mouse move. But if there's nothing on the stage, this doesn't trigger. So, uh, and we want comma call this arrow function. So now we want our arrow function again in here except uh, we've already got that, so that looks like this right here. So instead of doing the ticker dot on call the function, we do stage dot on, we're gonna test mouse move here, it's the wrong one, call this arrow function. And as you see, when we do that, it's not recognizing if we were to zog to the console, log to the console, it wouldn't even be capturing a mouse move because there's nothing on the stage. If we add something to the stage, like a new circle uh, dot center on the stage, like so, and we refresh here. No, oh, I missed the round brackets. Stage, refresh here. That's a circle. Now watch what happens. <laughs> Didn't work either. Uh, stage dot update maybe. Hang on. Stage dot update. The uh, the other thing, the ticker will automatically update the stage. Events do not automatically update the stage. So we refresh here. And still, still nothing. <laughs> Am I lying? We're, we're, oh, is this on top of the line? It might be on top of the line. Let's just, um, where did we start the line? I thought we started the line at, this is the beginning of the line. We move to, and we line 200, 100. Yeah, we should see this. So I'm not getting a stage mouse move out of this. Why not? 
Let's do what I had suggested. Uh, okay, I'm going to open it up in a normal browser. So nothing in a normal browser. I'm F12ing. Yeah, I'm not seeing any stage mouse move. So maybe I'm telling a fib about the mouse move. Okay, let's try stage mouse move, which I would usually use in this situation. And there, there we are. So that's working, no problem. I guess, uh, I guess that then. What's going on with my stage mouse move? I thought there was a mouse move, but perhaps I, I'm mistaken. Okay, so we're fine with um, stage mouse move. Let's just check that stage.update, by the way. If we refresh here, see, I've got a stage mouse move. I have no stage.update, and I'm not getting any uh, picture we don't circle. So we refresh here, and um, oh, well, that was interesting. You know what it was? It while it's if I don't move, there's nothing here. This is um, if I get on that quickly. That's a couple refreshes as it's drawing the stage here, as it's resizing. It actually I uh, can't resize from the other side, but there we go. That's where I went off the stage. I'll go off the stage here. And resize. So the resizing is doing the stage.update. Anyway, we do want a stage.update there. And now we we get this happening. One thing to note as well, let's try her out, is traditionally we would not use the frame mouse x frame minus y, but rather we would use the event object right here to give us data about our movement on the stage. This is what I'm, this is what I'm saying by directly accessing this, the mouse X and mouse Y, as opposed to the frame X, frame mouse X and frame mouse Y is another one of these things already and recording these values for us. So it's possible that they're slightly out of sync or something like that. But traditionally, we would use E dot stage X at this point. And let's have a look and see what that gives us. E dot stage X. So this is the create JS way. We would uh, call a mouse stage mouse move on stage. We would get the event object there, and we would ask for its stage X and stage Y. Let's see what it gives us. All oh, looks good. Okay, so that also works like that. Um, for a while, this was out of sync. So if you use CreateJS, a CreateJS version that isn't the Zim's CreateJS, these values are wrong because of Retina. So Retina, which is uh, Adobe, when you export CreateJS through Adobe Animate, it, um, it scales the stage to the pixel density. So that's uh, and, and Zim did that as well. We call it Retina. Well, there's a whole schmozzle where this value is wrong. You've got to divide that by the stage scale. Divide by stage dot scale x and stage dot scale y for that number to be proper. And this was such a pain to tell people that. That's why we provided frame dot so that we, we did this for you. With, when we used frame dot um, mouse x. Okay, so instead of calling it stage x, we called it mouse x. You can type it. <laughs> and then here, frame dot. How's this for an explorer, huh? Now, did you ever expect this much in a <laughs> mouse y? Sort of like the history, history of where all this stuff came from. So that's the reason we put this in, is it calculated that difficult value for us when we moved to Zim Retina back in 10.3, so that we wouldn't have to keep on telling people. And also it was an issue when people exported from Animate, and it's still an issue to this day, except we've finally been given access to be able to update CreateJS, to go in and GitHub and actually do some changes there. So it may be that we replace, the, the plan is to implement the Zim version of CreateJS, which doesn't, you saw that that actually worked with e.stagex and e.stageY. And if that actually worked, we almost could take away frame.mousex and frame.mousey. We wouldn't need that uh, being handled by Zim. 
But anyway, there we go. Any of those things uh, are close enough, though. I don't think you're going to notice a difference between the two of them. It's just a bit of a story. So that's a dynamic line. Is there anything else you want to do? What if you don't clear? It looks kind of cool. You want to see it? You don't clear the line. Can you imagine what's going to happen? So this is how generative art can be made. Stuff like that. So that's that's without clearing it. Um, there are curves, so you can do a line to, but also a move to. So, and, and by the way, you can draw as many lines as you want here. It doesn't have to just be one line. So it, it would be up to you as to how many shapes you have. You can have just one shape and draw many lines. Let's draw lines from from the corners to the mouse. Oh, we've got to clear it again. Lines from the corners. So we've got a line where we're moving to that location and we're drawing a line to this location. All right, so I think it would just be copying these things. And if we want from the corners, that would be 0, 0, 0, stage width, zim, explore, stage, oh, sorry, stage width, stage height here, stage height there, and then what's left, stage width, and 0. That do it. And we refresh here. Cool. You could also draw a rectangle in there. So you could draw a rectangle and then connect the lines to the rectangle. Do you want to see that? Okay. So that would be. Uh, Dot before for a rectangle you don't have to move you just uh, do draw a rectangle and then you specify the location so let's see it will have to be the frame dot mouse x frame dot mouse y uh, minus one hundred say minus one hundred comma and then a width and height two hundred comma two hundred. So the draw rectangle, the dr for draw rectangle, is the starting x, the starting y, and then a width and a height. So we've started where the cursor is, but moved to the left 100 pixels, and back up 100 pixels, and then we're going over 200 pixels. So let's just test this to start. And there's the rectangle that's moving around but now our little um, our lines are in the wrong place we want them to go to the corners of the rectangles yeah so minus a hundred let's see this is the one that's coming from the left hand side and minus 100 and then this is the one that's coming from the left hand side to the top so oh no this is the left hand side from the bottom okay and plus 200 and then this is from the bottom right hand corner so minus oh no Zero. stage width no that's plus and plus 200? Oh, this is the frame mouse Y. Hang on. This isn't. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's just going to be 100. And 100 there probably as well. And then where's, is there another one? Move to this one right here. Was the move to and then line to 0, 0. Oh, we just did the move twos. 
and then go is supposed to put those on the line twos. No, the line twos stay stay the edges, right? Okay, so this is the one right here. What do we do with this one? This is the move to. Oh, this is the top left. I get them all mixed up. Uh, where'd they all move to? So I'm just one off. Okay, move these three things. Can we do this? Move three things up. Uh, we're going to have to hold the shift down. So these three things right here move up. <laughs> oh no, no, I don't know what it did. I think that was it, yeah. And then this move to. We can move to the bottom one here. Right. I had missed the fact that we moved to ahead of the time where we drew the things. And this move to is the stage width. So that is the frames. It, it means it's on the right hand side. So plus 100, I think, I hope. And this one is the zero, which is minus 100. Okay, what does that look like? We got two minuses, we got two pluses, we've got two minuses and two pluses. That looks about right. Okay, let me refresh here. Yay! <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> so now we've got this uh, perspective drawing in a room kind of thing. You might be wondering, can can we fill this? Uh, yeah, I think you can. Now let's just see what happens if we set a fill. Dot fill um, blue. Well, it filled the rectangle, great, but we didn't close the line paths, I guess. So uh, I'm not sure what this is going to do. Dot close path. That's uh, it stands for close path. Nah, it didn't do anything. So that's too bad. I'm not sure. Usually if we draw a bunch of lines, I think as long as the lines uh, close, then we're good. So we move to, we drew a line to, what would happen if we draw line two? That's, that's what a CP or a closed path is supposed to do. Not sure, maybe, maybe a set of lines join don't actually fill. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't do that all that often. Line two. Well, this should tell us for sure. We moved to this location. We lined to. Now I would have assumed that the closed path would have done it if it's going to do it. You know what I mean? That that basically says to close the path. Can we see that the path is actually being closed? Let's check. So we'll move. We we'll line to stage width minus 20 and 20. All right, let's see. I don't see that closing. So that's that's up here, that one right there in the corner. But it should line to and then close the path. And it's not doing it. I wonder if we don't have a closed path on the shortcuts. I think that's the shortcut for a closed path. Would make sense. Let me just check. So we go to the Zim docs, we look at shape, and here are all the commands. Decode path is that. Draw circle, end stroke, CP closed path. Yeah. It's not closing the path. All right, perhaps it's broken. Let's do the hard-coded CreateJS one. So here's here's a test for you. How would you close a path with CreateJS? You would have to put line dot graphics dot close path or the CP would work. Okay, let's see if that works. Still didn't close the path. Maybe it can't close the path when we've got this many lines. Oh, now we've only got a, we, that path can't be closed because we only have a 
straight line. So dot line to some other place like zero comma zero. Hey, okay. So that time it closed the path. What did we do differently? Mm, the move twos, I get it, I get it. Uh, we would need line twos in there. All right, that, that might work. We, so you can't move two, draw a line, and then close the path because you've just moved and drawn a straight line. It's only one line. You can't close that. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Okay, so that means we can probably dot close path here. So there was no bug in Zim. And we'll get rid of that. Get rid of that one. And we refresh here, and that should still work. Yeah, that still works. Bring these guys back. Zim Explore, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome to go at any time. <laughs> it's like Zim Debug. <laughs> uh, that's what coding's like sometimes, huh? So what matters is that I know you're there. So it's really nice that you're watching this and sticking with it. Hopefully you're learning things uh, or whatever. Be, be amused. Amused at my fuddling about... <laughs> All right, so we don't want to go to a line 2 to 0, 0, but let's see what happens. What, what would happen if we move to only once and we actually lined to these locations? Does that make sense? I don't, I'm not sure what that's going to look like, but we're going to do it. So I change those to line 2s, like so, and we refresh here. Nothing there until we actually go in. Ah, that's kind of... <laughs> I was expecting something like that might happen rather than what we're actually looking for. But I do like it. Don't, don't you like it? Makes, make, makes me want to kind of keep it in the middle. Otherwise, it messes up. Um, so what we're missing is just figuring out how to do the line two so that they don't go back to the next corner, but go to the corner on the right. And then <laughs> basically what we would be getting is... Uh, what you know? What I was expecting is these be blue walls, but if we do, if we don't actually if they're all blue walls, we could just do this. Let's see. Uh, well, <laughs> could even just do this. Blue. Make it blue, and fill our rectangle. Uh, we'll just turn these back to line twos. Well, one move two can stay there. Move two, these ones are move twos, I think. Don't bother closing the path. And make the fill be light. There we go. And refresh here. <laughs> See what I mean? That's what I was trying to do, is uh, make some walls or, or something like that, blue, blue walls. But uh, this is the poor man's fill. Now, of course, this wouldn't work so that each wall could have its own color. There is something like this that might help you. One of the things is uh, we might want a floor and a ceiling to be uh, one color and then the walls another color. And so there's this. Let me just show you. Hang on a second. Yeah, I guess I'll show you. Uh, how do I find that? I guess go to Zim and look under examples. Will I find it? It's called Flare. So there's a special shape in Zim called Flare. It had a rocket ship. So Oh, here it is. Flare. So this thing right there was made with a flare. Right there. A whole bunch of flares. Every, almost everything was made with a flare. So you see this shape right here in the background? That's a flare. So a flare is just a series of rec you know, not rectangles, but like uh, polygons or whatever. This is also a flare. These corners are done with flares. So that's called a flare box. And you can make a box of flares. And <laughs> I thought that would be use useful. It was when we noticed that car tail headlights in cars had all these really cool shapes. I went, oh, 
that would be neat if we could make those cool shapes easily. So it's called the flare in Zim. I don't think it's been used all that much. Are you dying to launch a rocket? Right, so that's a flare. Another way we can make lines uh, is with this guy right here. Oh, we haven't added it yet to example. Let me just go after this. After this explorer, we'll go try and add that to the examples. Uh, other ways to find it is go into Zimcat. It's new to Zimcat right here. It's called Generator. And the generator allows you to draw relative lines. And that's kind of cool. So I think all of these ones are more shape-based generations. But there, uh, there are examples of line-based generations as well. Neat. Or you can get these things immediately by clicking on the right-hand side. So you don't have to wait for the, the generation to happen. So uh, this is an example of a line that we've turned into, so it draws lines, but we've turned them into blobs. So this is what we call a blob. A blob can have curve points too. Oops, I missed that edge. <laughs> there we go. So blobs can have curve points like that, but they can also have straight points. And then this is an example where we drew lines. So yeah, here's, here's a line example where we drew lines and made this fractal type pattern. But these are relative lines. So instead of saying absolutely based on, remember how this one is 0 0.00 and, and this is stage width and stage height in there. If you wanted to draw that other thing, this guy right here, if you wanted to draw this other thing, you'd have to draw a line to here then calculate 30 degrees to draw another line to here, then calculate another 30 degrees from that 30 degrees. So you'd start um, using sines and cosines and having to sort of remember the last angle that you drew and stuff. Well, that's exactly what generator does. Generator, remember, it says, oh, you went here and then you rotate it. Oh, you're, it's like rotating the whole drawing underneath that rotates the whole drawing 30 degrees. So once you rotate 30 degrees, you just draw another straight line. And then it rotates another 30 degrees, and you draw another straight line. No sines and cosines. You just say, rotate another 30, rotate another 30. And here it goes, boop, 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 boop. And then you can also remember what the last state was with this push and pop. So what you do is you get to here, and you say, push the current state. Then you draw this line, and you draw that line. And you pop to go back to the current state, or something like that. Oh, it actually gets all the way to the bottom. It's a recursive algorithm, and it gets all the way to here, and then it pops back. Anyway, it's just quite exciting. <laughs> Yay. And that's called the generator. So you can make lines like that. It's uh, really sort of fun to play with. Um, as a matter of fact, it's, as you can imagine, that's making a rectangle like that. So any shapes that you can make over here in shape, you can also make them here. Circles, ellipses, rectangles kind of stuff. The draw wrecks or curves. So these are curves right here. Uh, not that one. This one. That's Those are curves being drawn. So that's what a curve looks like when you fill it. So this could also be a curve to rather than a line to. Anyway, this has been a Zim Explore then. And uh, we've seen a bunch of different types of lines. Probably not all that we could do with lines, but uh, you get you get the idea. Throw this into a loop, and you could go and loop a whole bunch of lines, that kind of stuff. Yay! Fun! Wow! I am Doctor Abstract, and this has been a Zim Explore. Come on in to zimjs.com/slack. Join us there, ask questions, and maybe we'll do an explore with you. These files are all in zimjazz.com slash explore, and you can dig around. This one's called Lines. 
plural. We did an early explorer, like Explorer 4 on a wiggly line or something like that, like how to animate a line. Uh, cheers! Take it easy.